Good morning everyone. My name is M. Sudhir Kumar, working as an assistant professor of mathematics, MLR Institute of Technology. Today I am going to give a lecture on Laplace transform. This is an overview of my presentation. Today I am going to discuss on basic definition of Laplace transforms and few applications and sufficient condition for existence of Laplace transform, where we apply Laplace transform and when we will apply this. Laplace transform and of cell elementary functions. These are the topic we are going to discuss today. Let us see the basic definition of Laplace transform. See, f of t is a function of t and defined for all positive values of t. Then the Laplace transform of f of t is denoted by Laplace of f of t. L of f of t means this is a notation for Laplace transform that is defined as f bar of s is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus st f of t dt. This is a function of t, it is transforming to a function of s. t means it is a time domain and s means this is a frequency domain. So, this Laplace transform is an integral transform which transforms time domain to frequency domain. Here t is a time domain and s is a frequency domain. t is a time variable and s is a frequency variable. Let us see where will we apply this Laplace transforms. There are many applications of Laplace transforms in real life. Main most important thing is Laplace transform is integral transform which converts integral equation to algebraic equation. We convert this integral equation or a differential equation into algebraic equation. This is one of the application of Laplace transform. Next, it is mostly used in signal processing. It helps to convert time domain signals into frequency domain signals by which makes easier to analyze the system's behavior. See, when we talk something, it can be converted into an audio signal, right? Whenever there is a signal, it has certain frequency. So, we study the signals in frequency domain. So, Laplace transform is basically an integral transform which converts time domain to frequency domain. So, we study all types of signals in frequency domain that is S domain. Next application is these are applications of mainly used in electrical circuits analysis. So, Laplace transform are used to solve differential equations which occur in analysis of electronic circuits. In electric circuits, we form a differential equation by using Laplace transforms, right. Now, let us see the existence sufficient condition for a Laplace transform. Before we are going to see the sufficient condition, first let us see what is a piecewise continuous function. A function f of t, some function of t, f of t is a function of t, we say that it is a piecewise continuous over the interval a comma b. In this interval, we say that the function is piecewise continuous. If it is defined in such a way that it can be divided into finite number of sub intervals in each of which the function f of t is continuous. So, we divide the total interval into finite sub intervals. In every sub interval, the function is continuous. Then we say that the function is piecewise continuous on that interval a comma b. Second, exponential order. If when do you say that a function is of exponential order? Let us say a function f of t is said to be of exponential order a if this condition satisfies limit t tends to infinity e power minus a t f of t. That limit value should be some finite quantity. If that limit value finite quantity of order a, we say that the function f of t is of exponential order. If a function f of t satisfies first condition, second condition. These two conditions are satisfied, then we say that existence of Laplace transform. This is a sufficient condition for the existence of Laplace transform. Function must be first thing piecewise continuous, second it should be of exponential order. Whenever these two conditions are satisfied by any function, we say that Laplace transform exists to that particular function, right. Now, let us see few Laplace transforms of few elementary functions. First one, Laplace transform of constant k is equal to k by s, where 
k is constant k is any constant if you want to find laplace transform of k that is k by s let us prove this result by definition what is laplace transform of any function l of f of t is equal to integral 0 to infinity e power minus st f of t dt here what is our function k so 0 to infinity e power minus st f of t means what k dt since k is constant let us take it outside integral 0 to infinity e power minus st dt so k into what is integration of e power minus st e power minus st by minus s the limits are 0 to infinity so k into in place of t substitute upper limit e power minus infinity 0 minus lower limit e power 0 is 1 that is minus of minus by s so this is equal to k by s therefore laplace transform of k is defined as k by s say for example if you want to find laplace transform of 3 using this property we can write it as 3 by s right next second one laplace transform of e power a t laplace transform of e power a t is defined as 1 upon s minus a if you want to find laplace transform of e power minus a t then we can write it as 1 upon s plus a so for example if you want to find laplace transform of e power minus 2 t then apply this in place of a we have 2 so this can be written as 1 upon s plus 2 right if you want to find laplace transform of e power phi t so what is laplace transform of e power a t 1 by s minus a in place of a here we have 5 so this can be written as 1 upon s minus 5 next let us prove this result laplace transform of e power minus a t that is 1 upon s plus a let us prove this result where s plus a is positive right so by definition laplace transform of f of t can be written as integral 0 to infinity e power minus s t f of t dt here f of t means what e power minus a t so 0 to infinity e power minus s t into e power minus a t dt so this can be written as bases are same powers are added e power minus t into s plus a dt now let us integrate this with respect to t so this becomes e power minus of t into s plus a divided by s plus a and the limits are 0 to infinity when you substitute this upper limit e power minus infinity e power minus infinity means 1 by e power infinity that means 1 by infinity that means 0 so upper limit is 0 this value e power minus infinity is 0 minus lower limit e power 0 is 1 so minus into minus plus so this gives 1 by s plus a therefore laplace transform of e power minus a t this gives 1 by s plus a similarly we can prove laplace transform of e power plus a t that is 1 upon s minus a right now laplace transform of trigonometric functions cos a t laplace transform of cos a t laplace of cos a t is equal to s by s square plus a square let us prove this result laplace transform of cos a t by definition what is laplace of f of t integral 0 to infinity e power minus s t here f of t means cos a t there is a formula for this integration of e power a x into cos b x direct formula is there e power a x by a square plus b square a cos b x plus b sin b x just you compare this 
with this formula. So, what a is equal to minus s and b is equal to a. Let us substitute these two values in this formula that gives e power minus s t by s square plus a square a cos b x a means what minus s cos a t plus b sin b x b means what a. So, a into sin a t and the limits are 0 to infinity. So, upper limit as I told you e power minus infinity value will be 0. So, upper limit is 0 minus lower limit in place of t write down 0 e power 0 is 1. So, 1 by s square plus a square into minus s. So, this gives s by s square plus a square. For example, if you want to find Laplace transform of say cos 3 t using this result what can we say Laplace of cos a t means s by s square plus a square here s by s square plus a means what 3 square that is s by s square plus 9 right. For example, if you want to find Laplace transform of sin 3 t the result Laplace transform of sin a t is a by s square plus a square. This is the formula to find Laplace transform of sin a t. Here in place of a we have 3. So, just replacing this formula 3 by s square plus 3 square that is 9. One more formula is there Laplace transform of cos h a t hyperbolic function is there. Here the formula is s by s square minus a square. This is one result for hyperbolic function. For example, if you want to find Laplace transform of cos h 2 t. So, by using this result what can we say s by s square minus a square. Here a means what? So, 2 square is 4. So, s by s square minus 4 right. If you want to find one more example let us take Laplace transform of t power n. Laplace transform of t power n and formula is n factorial by s power n plus 1 this is one result. Say for example, if you want to find Laplace transform of t cube what is Laplace transform of t cube here n is equal to 3. So, you substitute n equal to 3 in this. So, this gives 3 factorial by s power 3 plus 1. 3 factorial is 6 that is 6 by s power 4 right. Next Laplace transform of sin h 3 t Laplace transform of sin h a t formula is Laplace of sin h a t that is a by s square minus a square this is the result. Here in place of a we have 3 just substitute in this formula. So, we gives 3 by s square minus a square a square means 3 square that is 9. So, this is how we find Laplace transform of few some elementary functions. Say for example, if you want to find Laplace transform of sin 3 t cos 2 t. There is a product of two functions sin 3 t and cos 2 t. So, what we do is just we multiply and divide with 2 1 by 2 into 2 sin 3 t cos 2 t. So, this 1 by 2 I am taking outside this can be written as 1 by 2 into Laplace transform of this is in the form of 2 sin a cos b. So, 2 sin a cos b let us write down the formula 2 sin a cos b can be written as sin of a plus b plus sin of a minus b. Here a means 3 t b means 2 t. So, this can be written as sin of a plus b to 3 t plus 2 t is 5 t. So, sin 5 t plus 
sin of a minus b 3 t minus 2 t is t. So, sin t. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 what is Laplace of sin a t a by s square plus a square here a means what 5. So, this gives 5 by s square plus 25 plus what is Laplace of sin t sin a t here a means 1 1 upon s square plus 1. So, this if you want to further simplify you can simplify it. Let us see one more example Laplace transform of cos 2 t sin 3 t same here also let us multiply and divide with 1 by 2. 2. So, this can be written as Laplace transform of 1 upon 2 2 cos 2 t sin 3 t. Again this is in the form of 2 cos a sin b. What is the formula for 2 cos a sin b? 2 cos a sin b can be written as sin of a plus b minus sin of a minus b. This is a formula for 2 cos a sin b. Here a means what? 2 t. B means 3 t substitute in this formula. So, this can be written as 1 by 2 into Laplace of sin of a plus b 2 t plus 3 t that is 5 t minus sin of 2 t minus 3 t is minus t right. So, this can be written as Laplace of sin phi t Laplace of sin phi t sin of minus theta is minus sin t. So, this can be written as minus of minus plus Laplace of sin t. So, what is Laplace of sin a t a by s square plus a square. So, this can be written as a means what 5 5 by s square plus a square means 25 plus what is Laplace of sin t here a means 1. So, 1 upon s square plus 1. This is how we find the Laplace transform of elementary functions. Now, what are all the topics we have discussed today is we discuss the basic definition of Laplace transform and its applications where Laplace transform is used in electrical circuits and mainly it is solved used in solving differential equations. Laplace transform is an integral transform which converts differential equation into algebraic equation that is what Laplace transform mainly used. Next sufficient condition for existence of Laplace transform. When we say that Laplace transform exists for a particular function, when the function is piecewise continuous and second condition is it should be of exponential order. Whenever a function satisfies these two conditions, we say that Laplace transform exists for that particular function and we have seen Laplace transform of elementary functions. Next lecture, we will discuss about Laplace transforms in using first shifting theorem and problems on it. Thank you.